say uh, it's very nice that we have a lot of cooperation from a number of uh, medical doctors and oncologists in town. Uh, in fact, uh, certain oncologists uh, who is the head of uh, a uh, oncology center that's apart from the main cancer group in uh, Vancouver. Uh, he uh, is so open-minded and so cooperative. Uh, sometimes I actually run into tumor marker panels uh, uh, for him when uh, the system does not allow him to order these uh, tests. And in fact, in order to treat cancer, I believe uh, that I, we should take a very, very practical approach with the patient's welfare, patient's well-being, uh, patient's quality of life and practicality uh, all in mind. And um, at times I do uh, believe that chemo has its place. Uh, and I do believe, do believe that, um, you know, uh, uh, when we need to move in with heavy guns, as long as we have all the backside comfort uh, in terms of supporting the immune system and the detox mechanism, uh, and, you know, we, I, I still feel very strongly that it has its place. And debulking uh, in certain, certain cases, uh, such as using surgery, uh, to decrease the tumor load in a hurry uh, definitely uh, is very, very important. And in fact, there is really nothing wrong with radiation. We know that it might be bad, but then again, for local control um, and then for palliative treatment, it definitely has its place, except uh, there are certain things that we need to do uh, to alleviate the side effect and also by understanding what radiation is doing, uh, we need to do things to uh, have it covered. Uh, for instance, uh, recently we have a very wonderful patient who has mesothelioma that was a result of asbestos uh, that, was, that he was exposed to uh, in the past. And um, we know that there's really no good treatment for mesothelioma. For mesothelioma. However, uh, we managed to cooperate with uh, this wonderful oncologist, we put him on cisplatin and gemcitabine, even though it was meant to be a trial. We didn't really expect that much out of it. Uh, and, uh, of course, when I treat a certain cancer patient, I, we don't have any protocols, I don't have any cookbooks. We always start from scratch. We look at the patient very carefully. We do a very thorough history taking. We will uh, take the family history, work history, uh, sometimes I even have to go back to whether they were breastfed or not to find out, to speculate what their immune status might be. And we, I have to go through a lot of timeline questioning in terms of what kind of stress was the, did the, was the person subjected to, to figure out the timeline in terms of how come the cancer occurred. Anyways, and, and then we'll go ahead and individualize very carefully and have all of the basis, all, all of the basics covered in order to go ahead to not only attack the cancer but also to support the system to help us fight. So in this particular case, of course, we did all the work up first. So oncologists kind of gave, it, gave me the signal and say, okay, Jim, I think I'm going to try this. I say, gee, you know, it's not going to do very much, but what else is there to do, you know? Uh, and, uh, and I talked to this guy. He said, no, Jim, I just want to give it a go. You know, he's a young guy uh, in his early, early 50s. And uh, so we did all the work up. I had him all prepared for the chemo. We move in with the chemo. I, we monitor him very closely between the oncologist and myself. And we co-treated the case. Surprise. The PET scan actually show no cancer activity. Actually, this is a workman's compensation case in the American sense is an L and I case. Everything was paid for by by the government, you know. And the doctor from WCB, that's the Workmen's Comp, then or the L and I board, was so surprised. They paid him every single bit of the expenses for a panel in UCLA to go over the case to see what happened because of the surprising result of the PET scan being totally negative. A PET scan, by the way, is a way to track down cancer activity without having any formation of tumor. It's a way that they will inject a little bit of glucose into your vein 
and this all and these glucose molecules are being labeled with a little bit of radioisotope. These are very weak radioisotope that is so unstable that it'll be gone in 24 hours time. So you have to prepare the reagent literally only 24 hours before you go in. So it's very safe. And so after they inject this radioactive or radioisotope labeled glucose into your vein, they will go ahead and scan through your entire body to look for a higher concentration of this radioisotope, assuming that there's a higher uptake of the glucose molecules by the cancer cells or by the more active cells. Of course, you have to you know, take into consideration certain areas of your body that would have a high uptake of the glucose, such as our brain, uh, our, uh, our heart, and also, of course, because glucose is excreted very fast and this radioisotope is excreted very quickly from our urine and the bladder is always going to glow. Anyway, so basically by tracking down where are the high uptake of this glucose, you would suspect where the cancer activities are. Sometimes you can find cancer cells without the formation of any tumor yet. And I wonder if anybody knows that a cancer, by the time it gets to one centimeter in diameter, which is the clinical detectable limit of most of these imaging, imaging techniques, including MRI and, MRI and CT and ultrasound, there are a billion cancer cells in it. And in fact, anything smaller than half a centimeter, we usually have a hard time detecting them. And PET scan is something that's, that is very useful to detect cancer activity before the formation of such a tumor. And the fact that it's negative, and in this particular case, it really threw a loop. And um, uh, uh, it really opened the eyes of not only in the, in the, in the in oncology field uh, in Vancouver, even uh, UC, in UCLA, they're seeing, saying, hey, what's happening here? Maybe we have to do something into looking into alternative medicine and complementary medicine. And in fact, it's very exciting. In fact, uh, Dr. Jerome, Jerome, Jerome Block, uh, MD, uh, who had been the head of oncology at UCLA Harbor, uh, that's the medical school in uh, UCLA, uh, you know, uh, he has, had looked into my practice for a number of years and became so interested uh, that uh, he, in fact, has certain plans to go ahead and incorporate, com in, and incorporate complementary medicine perhaps in the UCLA Oncology Center, which is very exciting.